All right, good morning. Um, no, good afternoon, I'm sorry. Um, my name is Unique Gail Wolfen, and I am the director of the Valley Stream location at um, Holy Name of Mary School in Valley Stream. Um, so welcome to our open house um, this afternoon. And we're gonna have this time to just give brief information about our camp and to answer any questions you may have pertaining to the camp. Uh, if you have questions, you can write them in the Q&A and we will save them for the end. So while I'm going to going through, first I'm gonna go through the, um, the PowerPoint and we're gonna provide the information, like general information of the camp. I also um, want to introduce myself, I, Unique. Um, mm -hmm. You may not see me, but my name is Joshua Darian. I'm the program director at Valley Stream. You may recognize me or my voice. Um, I've been there for three years now, um, and I know I can recognize some of the names here. So excited to see you guys again. Excited to be returning to Camp Saras for another summer. All right, so you want to go ahead and get started? All right, thank you, Josh. No problem. So these are the things that we're going to um, briefly go over is our arrival and dis dismissal process, um, the camp day, health and wellness, and registration info. And let's remember, if you have any questions, you can um, write them in the chat and we will answer them towards the end. If you, need, if, if you wanna, would like to talk, I can unmute you and we can have a conversation as well. Because I, I, we were only expecting four people today. So it's, it's, it's very intimate. And Unique, I wanna say, um, again, I, I'm not sure if I recognize Ms. Pastel's last name, but I do recognize Ms. Douglas. So I don't know if we have to go over everything because she's been there for a long time. Um, but if you have any questions, you can ask it and I will answer them in the chat. No problem. Okay, so this is our Valley Stream location. Uh, we have a very large space. Uh, we utilize the whole entire school. Um, we have the gymnasium, multiple classrooms, the playground, the cafeteria, et cetera. And we also utilize, last year was our first year, we were able to utilize, the, utilize other spaces like this green area over here. And we have Behind a it. bunch of green areas in the back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and we and our drop off and pick up is in the front up here towards the back of the school. So our arrival is a um, valet arrival. So you will pull up with your car and our staff will be waiting to check your child's temperature, do all the COVID protocols and sanitize and hand wash before they are walked in by staff members to the designated area. So we take that time to really um, adhere to these regulations and to make sure that the camp and the overall our campers are safe. We also keep a record of and last temperatures of staff and campers each day so that we can monitor any situations that are going on. Yes. Okay. And that's also with, we also have a secure dismissal where you pick up in the same area, you pick up your child and you, the person will sign out the child and they will present ID to pick up the child. And we also have hand washing stations and sanitizer there as well. Sanitizer is the cornerstone of a camp. We have sanitizer and hand washing station all throughout the camp. And we will talk about it a little bit later. J Josh, you wanna add anything? Um, if you are familiar with any of the practices that we did last summer, you know they were new to us then, but now we have a whole year of experience. Um, so I think that we're really gonna you know, be able to double down on making sure that the, everybody has hand sanitizer and has access to everything. Um, I think we figured out where the best spots to have, you know, um, equipment is, and we really were able to master the arrival and dismissal practices. So I expect that we'll have a very smooth summer this year because last 
some are we were learning, and then some are we are applying. Yes, this summer is really going to be another a different opportunity for us. Um, like like Josh stated, we really we were learning, but we really excelled we at did it work. as well. Yeah. Like we had, and we had a completely um, non. We had no COVID cases at our camp for mm -hmm. the whole season, and we we had a hundred percent on our Department of Health evaluation. Yes. Okay. So looking back to 2022, 2020 is pretty much what we just discussed. Um, we implemented all of the um, COVID procedures for the first time. We navigated through them all. We also did every hour cleanings in all um, our um, public areas, where I mean, mm -hmm. all of our camp areas where the campus were. The bathrooms were clean and checked every hour and we made sure that it was sanitized every hour. I so was personally we really cleaning these bathrooms. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm personally cleaning <laughs> these bathrooms to keep these kids safe. So safety and and health is a major priority with our kids. So looking forward to um, 2021, like we are we are coming into a. Hopefully, we will. We we don't really have all the information for. 2021, um, but we are hoping to be able to do more and to implement our um, trips with COVID regulations and et cetera. Um, last year, we brought a lot of things in for the kids um, in campers. This year, we will continue that. Hopefully, we will add trips to that as well. Mm -hmm. And we're still um, waiting for information on trips and things of that nature. So we'll, uh, we'll continue to update you as you know, more information comes to us. But trips has always been a big part of Camps R Us. And even though we weren't able to have them last year, we had a number of programs and activities that kept all the campers entertained throughout the day. I think the next slide details some of them. You have that, Union? But in terms of, um, but in terms of COVID regulations for 2021, it's pretty much what we implemented last year. Um, we will do, we'll be doing the hand washing station, sanitizing, cleaning every hour, um, monitoring health, um, fevers, um, health checks, et cetera, all those things. Um, we haven't, I know some of you may have questions about the vaccine. We haven't got our protocols pertaining to the vaccine yet, but they will be coming down the pipe because that's a big push. So we're not sure how that's going to work yet. But all of the other, um, procedures in terms of COVID testing will also be adhered to. So Josh, every day I can. Okay. All right, so um, on the screen, you'll see some of the activities that I was talking about. Um, the day is broken up into a number of different program areas where the campers travel between different areas of the camp and perform different activities. So some of these, these activities might include art, they can include recreation, um, include physical activity, you know, uh, running around outside, running in the grass areas that Unique mentioned. But each of the activities are about 45 to 60 minutes. And we have a calendar that we put up in front of the campus or near the front door where you drop your children off that will detail the programs that we will be hosting at the camp over the course of the summer. And so again, as you see on the screen, some of them include interactive gaming, um, Gaga Pit, which is a physical um, game where they throw a ball at each other. We have some go-karts where they might ride on the blacktop during their gym periods. A lot of water play because the summer gets hot and we don't want your children to get <laughs> too hot. Um, last year we had the water slide for, I don't know, what was it, unique three weeks? <laughs> Two, um, no, we had it. No, we had it for two two weeks um, mm -hmm. throughout the summer. Two for for the whole week. Our camp had had it. And, and Unique himself was in there. <laughs> so and, and so the kids yeah. were loving it every single day. I so enjoyed it. He enjoyed it. Kids enjoyed it. I didn't get in last summer, so this summer I have to as well. So <laughs> I will be enjoying it. But all of these electives um, are designed to keep your kids entertained, and we enjoy them as well. Our group leaders have 
fun doing them. I was once, I started at Camp Saros as a group leader. Um, so now being a program director, I think that I can see things from a different perspective. So a lot of times I'll even step in during the dance programs. And last year um, at Valley Stream, we hosted a giant play. And uh, <laughs> if you saw me at any point during the last week, I was running around getting that play done, but it was well worth it in the end. <laughs> But um, all of these activities are very fun and we always get positive reviews on them. So I think that your children will look forward to them and you'll look forward to hearing the stories that they tell you about them. I didn't even mention um, EduCamp and soccer and dance and, and all of these other things, but you can, uh, you'll can you see them when you sign up for camp. <laughs> all right. Off, um, off campus activities. So the off-campus activities, so as Unique mentioned before, we are still receiving information as to the field trips and traveling to locations outside of camp, but some of the off-campus activities that are a regular part of the camp schedule are attending swimming and bowling. Um, we use the Woodmere pool and we also use Woodmere lanes for our swimming and bowling, and it's about a 15 to 20 minute ride from our campus there. Um, if we will be going forward with that this this summer, then it usually looks like the younger children will go to the bowling alley first, and then they'll go to the pool, and the older children will go to the pool, and then the bowling alley, and they'll both of the groups will be back before dismissal, um, and they'll be able to have snack and things like that. Other trips, of course, include locations such as um, in the past we've gone to places like Laser Tag, um, Adventureland. We've gone to, I know some of the younger kids have gone on, uh, they've gone on a, a boat trip, well, not a boat trip, but like a boat exhibit. Um, they've gone to a nursery, they've gone to a petting zoo. There's a, there's a ton of things and we list them all on the calendar, but as of this moment, we're still navigating um, what venues that we can attend and what we're gonna be working with. So all of that information will be coming out shortly. But in the meantime, while we're awaiting that, we will still be um, listing the programs and activities that will be available. And we are excited to introduce some new ideas this year. We're trying to have our group leaders be a little bit more proactive and, and creative in terms of the ideas that they push forward. And so we would like to offer programs that might be more linked or more um, directed towards your child as opposed to a standardized program as well. I just want to add, if if trips, if due to COVID, um, New York State COVID nineteen guide, guidance, if it doesn't happen, we are, we are making sure a, a lot of these activities will come to camp. So instead yes. of doing the the swimming, we will do more water activities, more exactly. slides. They will bring in more things for your child to accommodate them in terms of like the water play, uh, and more activities will come on campus in comparison to us leaving campus. Yes. But and it's we also a big situation, yes, with the whole bus situation because of the social distancing. So mm -hmm. we just try to make sure that we adhere to all these guidelines. Okay. All right, just like we just like I stated earlier, um health and wellness is our main priority at Camp Sora. And we are making sure that your child is safe all the time. All our senior staff are trained in um, CPR and first aid. Um, we have, even at the pool, um, we are also train in pool safety as well. Um, all campers and staff are required to have health forms and provide the health history and physical exams and immunization records. Um, all this is really have always been a practice for camp. So it's a pretty standard um, operation in terms of the health and safety protocols. And now just with COVID, it's just gonna be a little added as per last year. Okay. Josh, do you have anything to add for this or no? Um, I think that one thing that this picture doesn't list is wearing masks. So we do, um, have children wear masks while they're on campus, 
but when they're within their groups, within their cohorts, unique, is that what it's called? Yes, cohorts. They'll be able to remove them, correct? When they're within their individual yes. cohorts? So, so they will only, so, so within their cohorts, they will be able to remove their masks within their cohorts. When they're moving a, around the campus or, or in public areas, they have to wear them. So in the hallway, um, outside, um, they have to wear them. Lunchroom. And, and, and that may, that protocol may change as per New York State, we're not sure, we're just waiting for those guidelines. We just trying to make sure everyone stays safe right. during this time. And staff will be wearing them as well. Staff is staff are required to wear them all the time. Yes. Okay. So registration. Um, in terms of registration, you can go online at campsrs.org and to um, fill out an application and registration online. If there's any questions, you can always email at info at info at um, I also have the phone number as well. It should be up there. Is the phone number there? I don't see it on the screen, but if you say it out, I'll write it in the chat. Oh, yes, 516-935-2267. Mm -hmm. That's for any information you may have pertaining to registration during the off season. Sounds good. All right, now we are up to questions. Now, do we have any questions? And I, I think we, what I'll do is I will, un, I will ask you to unmute. Hi, gentlemen. Um, yes, how are you? Mm -hmm. you I'm Douglas? well, thank you. Hi, Josh. Um, <laughs> so I thank you for the clarity of the presentation um, and kudos to you and your staff for not having any cases last year. That's um, reassuring to hear. The question that I have, and I'm curious about, I know that in the past, the kids would, you know, congregate together for mornings, et cetera. How does it work? How did it work last year under the COVID piece? And that's what I'm curious so, about. What's the, sounds what's like the, the breakout oh, challenge. I'm sorry, what's the, um, right. what's the ratio of the kids to, you know, the student, the, the kids to <clears throat> staff ratio, et cetera, under the COVID situation that we're in. I'm just curious about that. So with the younger kids, we we um with the younger grader. kids we we do. She's a seventh. Grader. Oh, so so the seventh, so she's a seventh grade. So in that group, we have we have two staff members. Okay. Two staff members. Mm -hmm. Um, for every for every like, I think fifteen kids. So for those, because that one's they're bigger, so you don't need as many staff. For the young kids, we have three, and if we have to get, we get more kids, we have to add staff. And for the um, breakout challenge question, last year, um, to sort of circumvent that, I would start implementing programs that people could do within their individual groups. So, for example, with like Hannah's group, I would um, have them, they would all, they would be in that, uh, that staff room a lot, because they were the older kids. And so they were, I would able, I'll be able to um, start a program with them like a scavenger hunt or something like that over the walkie where they could start that program and the rest of the groups would be doing their own subject you know they'll be in their own program activity so these groups wouldn't be intermingling they wouldn't be mixing but each group would be able to do a breakout challenge over the course of the week it's just not the same as what you might be used to like two years ago when we would be in the gym and doing musical chairs and things yeah. like that we wouldn't, we wouldn't host things like that. So when they come into the gym, we usually just send them to their um, first scheduled activity of the day to prevent, you know, any large groups mingling or things like that. Exactly. Right. So each, I just want to piggyback off of that. Each, so each group has their own designated area 
within the camp. So it's mm-hmm. like a, a like a home base. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's where they go. So so that's where they generally will do their morning activity within mm-hmm. their cohort. And like sometimes we do it virtually, like Josh said, either on the mic or like live, just to as we go around, just to make sure we are kind of involving them, but mm-hmm. doing it in a healthy way. Okay. okay, sounds good. I was looking at the site. I don't see the calendar up. Do you think um, looking at last year's zone is pretty similar? Let's say, you know, you're not able to go out. It's pretty much most of the activities that you guys did last year would be similar. Um, no, we are trying to do some new activities this year. Okay. So the, we're still working. It's really early in the preseason. Mm-hmm. So we are still working on the, the calendar. All right, perfect. All right, thank you so much. Um, thank you. Thank you, Miss Douglas. And uh, to piggyback off what Unique said, I think last year, you know, COVID was was sort of a surprise to everybody. So Correct. some of the programs weren't what you were familiar with. I mean, if I'm going to be completely honest with you, because I, I was with Hannah the year before. So I, I know that you might have been feeling as though there was you know, a lack of programs, but I think that we were all just trying to figure things out. And this year, you know, I know personally as program director, I'm working with some of the others in our region to come up with ideas so that we don't have to have any last minute things, you know, we can have fully fleshed out um, programs that are being designed in February as opposed to June, you know. Gotcha. All right. Yeah, we were playing catch up last year. Yeah, I just want to be honest with you. (laughs) Right. Okay. All right. Well, I thank you both. Um, Thank you. Well, um, if she goes anywhere, it will be with you guys. You know, I'm a Campsarar, Campsarus girl, lady, I should say. That's good. Thank you. So, um, you do because you always, uh, you've always taking care of me with the beef patties cooking <laughs> so I, i'm gonna have to get them from somebody else no worry yeah. unique i got you too <laughs> okay <laughs> all right gentlemen thank you so much and um thank you thank you i would look forward continue to be safe and you know continue to do what you guys do you too thank you all so right, much thank stay you. safe take care thank all right bye I believe Miss Postel is still in here as well, but I haven't. Hello. Yep. Yes. Hello. How, are how are you? you Hi. How are you? Um, I'm not sure if hey. you guys know, but I'm the parent of Anaya Lewis. She'll be working there. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. And oh, yes, I, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My son was there two years ago, so I'm thinking about putting oh, him back okay. this year. What was his name? Just okay. Braylon. Braylon Postel. Braylon Postel. And what grade was he, he in? He was in uh, kindergarten then. Braylon, Braylon. Yes, I'm, oh, okay, cool. yes. Yeah, I know Braylon. Um, so, I, you know, I was just trying to get an idea of, you know, everything that was going on for this summer. Anaya did work last summer. Um, she was fine yeah. and everything went well. So I'm thinking about putting my son this year. Oh, that's great. That's great to what, what grade um, do you have any questions? Um, um, he's going to the second grade. Okay. The only question I was thinking, are you guys um, going to be randomly testing the children for COVID? Okay, so we, we don't randomly check, but they have to. So this is what they do. They have to, they have to check. Um, they got to get a COVID test um, before they enter camp. And they also have to monitor health like fevers and temperature, temperature checks before, like a like yeah. a week before. So that's how we did it last year. I'm not sure if we are changing that, um, okay. but we never did random checks. What we did, we, we consistently monitor their health. So if you appear to be not in good health mm-hmm. with a high temperature, we would not, you can't enter and then th- we won't take you in for that right. day. Right, okay. That's how we did it. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, and I think all the other 
questions I had was answered. Oh, great. So if you, if you, so, um, if you have any other questions, just let me know. And Anaya has my number. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> All right, thank you. Guys. <laughs>